everyone Angela Wolf here behind the scenes welcome say hi say where you're from it's so nice to see you all so did you hit yesterday's live show yesterday I showed how to make this super cute skirt you could do it in an hour and the only thing I had left off was the waistband and the hem so I'm going to show you how to finish that skirt if you missed it it was on brothers live show I put a link below if you want to see it Super, super cute. I think you'll really like it. I have to make a second one anyways. So I thought I'll make another one and show you how I hemmed it. Um, I was debating between doing the rolled hem on the serger or doing a rolled hem, which I did a rolled hem. And then the waistband, you can see I added two different fabrics and some thin elastic. So I think it turned out pretty darn cute. So that's today. And also, uh, you can go back to watch the episode on how I actually made the pattern and everything. So if you have questions, you can drop them here though. Uh, lastly, somebody asked me, I want to make the Linda tunic. So here you go. It's right here. And I want to turn it into a front zip top. So not zip. Well, it could be zipper, but she wanted a front button, basically a button down top. And how could she change it? Well, there's two things you have to do. I would recommend moving those darts. They're like gathers right here on the top, moving those and turning them into a dart. And then I'll show you how to make that front placket. So that will be next on the lesson. So Patricia, I know you were waiting for this because you're making one of these for you, yourself and your daughter. So that will be second on here. So let's get started. Why don't we start with the Linda tunic since I know that she's been waiting for that. And then we'll move on into the skirt. Okay. So. If you've made this top, or if you haven't, this is what it looks like. I have a ton of YouTube videos um, from It's So Easy that showed you how to sew this top. I even did a few pattern hacks. But there's a seam right here, which you can barely see. You can kind of see it on the graphic here. There's gathers right there. And you can see the top opens up just a little bit right here, but there's no front opening. So first of all, let me just peek in here and show you something. Although the pattern looks like this, I have that closed because you add interfacing and then you add your plackets. So Fashion Sewing Club, yesterday we did a welt pocket in our live lesson. Uh, you can catch the replay in the club. But this is kind of similar where we're adding panels in here where they have to meet up uh, and then it ends up looking like this. Well, what if you want an entire front section and not just that? So first of all, let's get started with the gathers. In the top, this is the pattern piece. This is actually number one, not number two. Number two is the back. And then you have the top. We need to get rid of these gathers. Well, at least you don't have to. You could have a button down top with that. So you could leave them. But a lot of you have asked, how could I move those into a side dart? So here's a little better picture of what that looks like, the pattern pieces. You don't really need to do anything to number four, but I added it here because this is actually, this seam is not at the shoulder, it's actually at the front. So if you look closely here on this graphic, you can see that that yoke comes around to the front. That's why those gathers are there. So they're basically gathers for the bust area. So if you want to move those, and I'll cut just outside of the red line so you can see this a little bit better. On your pattern, locate where the full bust is, where your full bust is, I should say. So, Let's just say it's about right here. We can move these gathers to the side and they could be a higher dart or a French dart, which is what we is a little lower. On this, I don't think it'll really matter, but I like my darts to be angled a little bit. So I'm gonna go down here. So there's one of my marks. And then my other mark, I'll just put right here in the middle of that dart. I'll use a different color pen. 
So draw yourself a line to the center. And now the other line I want to draw is this is the end of my gathers. And this is the end of my gathers. So what does that look like on a flat piece of paper? Well, if it came up like this, it would look like a dart, right? <laughs> well, it's the same concept. It's a dart that was changed into gathers. So now if I snip down the center, right to that point, but not through it, I'm gonna cut this off here, and then do the same thing for wherever you want your dart. Now, I could have drawn this way down, over, but that's just a nice soft edge not too pointy. Now I'll trim this right to that marking, but not through it. And then if I slide this closed, I'm basically going to take this front line to meet that line there. Now what do you see? Well, it looks like a dart to me. I'm just going to set this right here. So not to confuse you, if I cut off that part, there's where the gathers. I'm gonna take this line and match it up to this line. All right, so the only thing you need to do now is take your ruler and do what we call truing, which means make this a straight line. So see how it's angled a little bit? You would take this and just draw a straight line. So that's one. And then for the side here, this would be your dart. So you'll need to angle the fabric out a little bit or the paper, I should say, because when you sew that, this is what your dart usually looks like. Okay, so we got rid of the gathers, perfect. All right, now what about the front opening? Well, because I designed the pattern where this is actually a straight line, if you look at the pattern piece, you're doing a lot of your cutting into this neckline after you add the interfacing. And you can see that on this pattern, this illustration right here. The front piece is cut on the center fold. And that's going to be where you insert your opening. I angled it a little bit. And that's how it looks like it's open. But I didn't have you cut the fabric first because it gets so wonky, especially if you're a new sewer. So let me just go back here and show you the pattern piece. So see number one, that's where the gathers are and the front is cut on the fold. So I made it really easy for you to turn this into a button down. So first of all, you won't need these placket pieces or number seven or eight. You won't need any of those because you're gonna totally change your front. It's a little shiny, but hopefully you can see that okay. So I'm going to go back. Let's see if I can find, I've got one of these. So this is what the pattern looked like. Change your dart. And now this is what your pattern will look like. So let's take this. I typically, it depends how big your buttonholes are, but I typically will add one inch as the extra to come over. So this is a mini pattern, so I'm just gonna, let's pretend this is one inch. One inch. That's where your buttons will be, and then you need a facing. So it depends how you wanna make your facing piece, but you can still use the collar that came with it. This collar piece right here. But if you decide to use that collar piece, you're gonna need to make it a little bit longer so it can extend all the way over to here. Because right now, your old collar would actually be open like this. So that collar would technically only come to here. Does that make sense? So you would need to make it longer. How much longer? Well, you'll have to measure your pattern. I don't know it offhand, but you would have to measure your pattern. So this one inch, this is gonna be where your buttons or your buttonholes go. I'll just put these for buttonholes. You would extend this over. And then something needs to come in as a facing. So do you want your facing, let's just say, well, let's draw this another one inch. 
I like one inch increments because then you can remember it. So here's another one inch. This is the piece that will be folded under, okay? So this entire section right here is gonna need to be interfaced, but we'll talk about that in just a second. So you've extended it one inch, and that means it will fit on your neckline and fit all the way down to put your buttons. Then you need a facing, which this could fold back. Now, you have an option. You can serge this edge, fold it right here, and then just do a nice top stitching here. Or you can add one more inch or a half of an inch. I'll do an even smaller one, but sometimes I'll just do a whole inch. It doesn't matter. Whatever your preference. I'm extending this line out and extending the neckline out. And this is also a fold. And this would be if you folded this line and then folded this line, you would have a nice facing. So before I cut this out, how big would you need this collar to be? The collar needs to extend to this section here. So it's literally one inch past the front of your pattern, but don't forget this would be open a little bit. So I would probably just cut my collar longer and then I could pin it to the neckline just to see, uh, cut it longer than shorter or finish this whole area and then you can measure from here all the way around your neckline and you'll know. Another thing is you could have the collar finish earlier if you wanted to, but then that's that's a little bit more advanced, so I wouldn't advise it. So that's how you extend the pattern out for a button opening. And this whole section here is going to be interfaced. So you'll need to have a piece of interfacing for both sides that look like this. So you'll cut two interfacing and you'll cut two of this front one, but this is all one piece now. And then the collar is a separate piece, but that I'm just gonna put on here, extend collar. So if this is your collar piece, pattern piece, the easiest place to extend that is on this line right here. So however much you think you need to extend, let's just say you have one inch, two inch, just say two inches. I don't know exactly off the top of my head and every size might be a little different. But just add it to the back. And you know this front is going to make be the same on both sides. I think the pattern piece is actually one long piece that looks like this. So I probably don't need to tell you this, but if you fold it in half, find your center back marking. Just cut it right there and add right into that center back. All right, pretty easy, right? And then this is what this will look like. And I would love to see some of you do a pattern hack like this. This would be a lot of fun. Well, you know, we've been making jeans, which next week I'll show you what I ended up doing for my embroidery. I think you'll like it. I'll show it to you at the end, but it'll be on next week's show. But some people said, well, I want to make the Linda tunic to go with my jeans. So this was a good opportunity to show this. All right. So if I take this and I fold on that first fold line, and then I fold on the second fold line. So you can kind of see the sewing process. Oops. I think my pattern wanted to go to sleep. Let me make it a little brighter. There you go. Now it's not super bright. So you can see the process after you add the interfacing, you would press along this line here, press along this line. From the front, you have this one inch extra area to put your buttonholes. And in the back, this is all finished nicely because it's folded under. And you would need to do a nice top stitch right along the fold. So you're basically top stitching right along the fold right here from top to bottom. So as far as construction, you will do that and sew in your dart. And I would do that before I even sewed it to piece number four. That way this whole front piece is done. And once you sew on piece number four, you can take that measurement, so four goes all the way around the rest of your neckline, you can take that measurement all the way around and that will be the measurement for your collar. All right, any questions? I am live in the chat today, but not with you on camera. So I will, I will answer your questions. You can drop them in there. And if you're watching the replay, that's the best place to put the questions because they're easy to find. All right, so that's the Linda Tuna pattern hack. Pattern hack, here you go.
Very easy. So if you're going to do this hack, you will not need number seven, eight, uh, or six. Wait, no, six is the sleeve straps. Sorry. <laughs> um, number four, you don't need, yeah, you need number four. So you're going to need front, the front, the back, the sleeve, the yoke, the collar, the sleeve collar you're going to change. That's number five. The sleeve strap you need plackets. So number seven and number eight. You will not need. And you're going to add, you're going to extend out number one, and you're also going to uh, change this and change your collar. And you also need an interfacing. So that'll be a new piece that you don't have on here. All right. Pretty easy, right? Okay. So for those of you that are into making cute, cute skirts, I'm making these for my two youngest nieces. Although Allie, I'm pretty sure now that she's a teenager, she is not going to want a poodle skirt. But <laughs> I don't know, Allie, do you want this for Halloween or anything like that? Because this could be a lot of fun. <laughs> I know. So if you missed this episode, this was yesterday on Brothers Live Show. So I don't know the number off the top of my head, but if you go back to Brothers Sews on their YouTube channel, and I'll leave a link right here, and I'll also add it to the newsletter that goes out on Friday. So I we added the poodle, which we found in Art Spira. Oh my gosh. I can't say I found it. I have to say we, because this is why I love sewing with you guys live. Uh, you came up with so many fun ideas, but I showed you how to measure, to design your own pattern. And the last steps that we have is hemming and the waistband. So let's head on over to the machine. Actually, the serger. We're at the serger. I'll bring you over there if I can find the, <laughs> the right camera. Here we go. This skirt, I taught it yesterday and embroidered and made a few mistakes and made it in an hour. And then when I hung up, I literally hemmed it and finished it, it everything in 15 minutes. So you could make this in an hour or less, including the embroidery. All right, so here's my second skirt that's not finished. All I've done to the bottom is I surged it just to finish it. And I cut the top just to make it a little curved, which I showed that on yesterday's show. And now on yesterday's show, I also showed you I cut all these strips two inches wide. I did not have fabric long enough to do the whole waistband, but I didn't want to waste this fabric. So I have two pieces of, let's see, there you go, two pieces of the bubbly fabric. I'm surging that, putting it together. Then I have two pieces of the pink, the light pink. And guess what? I need one more piece of the pink to make this work. So let's head back to the table. See how I have, if you look closely, I have the one fabric here, there's another, and there's another. So I need one more strip. Oh no, do I have enough fabric? I hope so. I probably put it all away <laughs> because we were finished sewing. Here it is. You guys would love doing I Spy in my studio right now. I found it. So these, hopefully I have one more short piece that I don't have to waste anymore. I know, didn't this turn out cute? This is adorable. I still haven't decided where to add the ribbon. Some people said on the back, um, and I could add a ribbon to the front, but I think this might be just fine. Or I could let the girls pick it out and they can do whatever they want to. All right, two inches. I have to quit putting stuff away after the live shows. <laughs> All right, what are the odds that this one is the good rotary? Pretty good. All right, so this is two inches wide. I need two of these. 
And why do I need so many? Well, I didn't have a piece that was long enough to go all the way around the waistband, and I didn't really want to waste a whole nother piece of fabric. I guess I should have pressed a little harder on that. So now I can piece these together so it's one nice long strip. All right, back to the serger. All right, and I am using the Brother Airflow 3000. It's National Surger Month. And yes, the knife cutter on the side does thread cutter, comes with it. Somebody had asked me that yesterday. All right, the next step, and I really don't need to press this. We're going to be cutting it anyway. So take one of your strips and with right sides together, take the other strip. I'm going to try to line up that seam a little bit. You really can't see it. There's so much going on here. All right, and let's run this through the serger. I'm just barely trimming off my raw edges because they're not totally straight. So this waistband is going to be way bigger than my elastic, but that's okay because I wanted the little elastic to go. It's only a half inch wide elastic and I want it to kind of sit at the top. Okay, so there's two pieces. Now let's grab the third one. So I'm, notice I'm doing contrasting for each one. And the reason it's longer at this end is because I'm trying to line up that seam, which is down here. Yeah. So by the way, I'm probably reading all of your statements right now. So be sure to leave comments. I just couldn't, I didn't have good enough internet to be live today. And I wasn't in my studio. So like I get to watch the show too, but I already taped it yesterday. <laughs> All right, here we go. There's that. So grab this and your skirt and your elastic and let's head to the ironing board. All right, I keep walking around with the elastic. That is not going to help. Okay. So I wanna give this a good pressing. So just press those seam allowances away from the center. Okay, and now fold it in half. And don't worry, this is way longer than you're gonna need. So we'll be trimming off some of this. I think I even did this one opposite of the other, so at least the girls will know whose skirt is who. <laughs> All right, so we'll bring that over to the table to cut. And while we're at the ironing board, you can see my surged edge. I wanna do a double rolled hem, or should it just say a rolled hem. Some people call it double folded, but because you're folding it twice. But because I surged it, see how nice I can just Tuck this under, 
Give it a little pressing I'm using the Taylor's clapper because you combine that with a little steam. Beautiful. And we're already back around. I like to just get all of this finished at the same time. And that way, when I go to the sewing machine, I'm just about finished. All right, tuck this under one more time. No, I'm not using the rolled hem foot. I'm just using the standard J foot. When I do a rolled hem like this with all the pressing, it's just as easy to do this. Don't get me wrong, the rolled hem foot is great, but when you have all those little seams, and this is a cotton fabric, sometimes it's more hassle to get around those than it is to just press it up and sew it. Now, this skirt, I have not added the embroidery yet. I will. So I want to mention that because in the last yesterday's show, we embroidered before we finished sewing the skirt together. Well, if you have a cute skirt that you want to add some embroidery to, it's really easy to do that. You just have to make sure the back of the skirt is out of the way when you're doing the embroidery. When you're sewing from scratch, you might as well just do it in order. All right, so that's ready to sew. And why don't we go ahead and mark our waistband now. So this is on the fold. It's a little crooked there. I think I'll just mark this seam with the side seam. Just straighten this out a little bit. Let's see, this way, is that better? So you can see the whole thing. I'm lining this side up here. Just kind of maneuver this to straighten it out a little bit. That's my seam right here. I'm just going to give myself a snip and then I'll cut just a little bit larger than it. Yeah, that's going to fit great. So now take this part, right sides together. We'll stitch from one end to the other using these snips here as a guide. So these snips, are, those should be my finished seam, so my knife will be just outside of that. And we can do this right on the serger. I, I talked about maybe doing a blind hem with the ladder stitch, and that way um, I could add some ribbon. But I thought, you know, there's so much going on. This dress, I'll save that for the next skirt. So there's my snips. So my stitches are basically right on those snips. Open it up and my waistband is ready to get to put on the skirt. All right, so let me grab my elastic here. Take you to the table for that. <laughs> I just carried it to the ironing board and now it fell off. So first of all, we need to trim our waistband so it matches. And I'm gonna just bring you back to the sewing machine without making you seasick. All right, hold tight. So this is perfect. I didn't even plan this. But 
See how the waistbands are different? And now the girls will know whose skirt is whose. Always. So I'm using a thinner elastic. You want to measure. So I don't have the girls' exact measurements. I just did a search for what's the waist size for a size six. So this needs to be 18. It's about 23 and a half, which is fine. I'm using a thinner elastic, which stretches a lot. So you want it to be smaller than their waist. So I'll put a pin here, and I'm going to run this through the sewing machine to secure that. All right. And then for the waistband, we need to trim this so it's even. You can kind of see it's not even all the way around. I'll just kind of eyeball it here. You're probably thinking, wait a minute. This is way bigger than the elastic. Well, it is. And the idea is I want the elastic to stay up close to the top. And I will put a top stitch about right here, which will keep that up there. And then this part will be surged to the bottom. It's kind of like a graduated gathering for the waist. All right, to the sewing machine. Now, I raised my sewing machine, took off my embroider unit, even though I could embroider with that on or sew with that on. Um, it just gets in the way. And so I'll move you over just a little bit here. And I opened it so I can get my fabric around that bottom section. So first, let's go ahead and add, stitch our elastic. I usually do that with a zigzag stitch. It's one little stitch and I'll just do one more right next to it. Oh, can you tell I just hit the wrong part of my foot pedal? I'm angling over the camera and I keep hitting the back of the foot, the pedal. All right, there's that. Now we're just going to slide this elastic in into our opening. Now it, you have to be really careful that it doesn't twist. So while it's in there, I'm just going to go down. And it really makes it easy if you lift off this side of your sewing machine. Now, you know, I always usually sew with it flush, but this just makes it easy. And I know a lot of you have this on your home sewing machine. So I don't want to stitch on the elastic because I want the elastic to be free. So I'm going to just kind of eyeball it and stitch right in the center of this pink. Oops, not with a zigzag stitch. <laughs> Although a zigzag stitch would be cute. I want to use a straight stitch. And I'm just using a stitch length of 2.5. This is just a cotton fabric, so. And as I'm doing it, I just glide my elastic in here and fold this over. Stop and kind of glide your elastic over. Making sure not to stitch on top of your elastic. And again, I'm using half inch elastic. So if you have, you only have one inch elastic around, that's fine. And now I'm starting to pull a little bit to get to move the elastic down through the waistband because again the weight the elastic's much smaller than the waistband. I can even gather it up this way a little bit. All right. So you're just kind of maneuvering the elastic. So wherever you're sewing, it's nice and flat. So you can see I've got quite a bit of fabric, kind of like a scrunchie. <laughs> oh my gosh, that would be so cute, matching scrunchies to go with the skirt. Oh goodness, I'm going to, the more you're here, the more ideas you come up with. So while we're here, let's go ahead and hem our skirt. 
You can hem from the right side or the wrong side. I usually hem from the right side, but for you to be able to see this, what I'm doing, I'll hem from this side. So let me see if I can make this just a little brighter for you. Is that better? Let's see. There you go. I'm going to change my stitch length to 3.0. And I'm stitching just on the edge of that fold that I pressed. Again, I'm feeding the extra fabric underneath the machine. It just makes it really easy to do this. to the end. All right, so we're hemmed. So now we just need to attach our waistband. I could just do it on the serger, but I'm going to do it on the sewing machine first, and then I'll take it to the serger. So find one of your seams and just line it up with what you think might be one of the side seams, which would be this. I really don't need to pin this. You know what? I'll take you to the ironing board to show it to you, and I'll pin it just so you can see it, but we'll take this directly to the serger. There's no need running two steps and sewing as well. So I'll take you to the ironing board. And hold tight. I always try to move the cameras when you're not on camera so you don't get seasick. <laughs> okay, so this is what we have. Our skirt is finished and we have our waistband. So with right sides together, which both of these are right sides, I'm trying to find the side seam and match that up with the side seam here. And I'm only gonna put two pins in here just so I can kind of mark this I don't like using pins in the serger unless I have to. So if I stretch this out, you can see it matches. So I just have to serge carefully and then I'll maneuver the elastic so I'm always sewing on a straight, a straight area, not where it's gathered. Back to the serger. All right, and I'd love to know, are you gonna make this skirt for anyone? If so, whom? It would be make a great costume. You could make it for yourself too. I just love the whole group we had on the live show yesterday with all the great ideas. I never in a million years would have thought of a poodle. <laughs> but everyone said, this reminds me of the poodle skirts from the 60s and 70s or whatever age that would be. Uh, would that be 70s? It was BA, before Ange. <laughs> That's what my family always says. Okay, notice I'm just stretching to keep this fabric nice and straight. And I'm surging below that top stitching line. I want that extra fabric. It's kind of supposed to be just a nice look. Now, when you're surging, make sure you have all that extra fabric. Let me take you out just a little bit here. Make sure all of this is out of the way so you don't accidentally surge a hole in your skirt. Or I'll probably be able to hear you scream from your sewing room all the way to mine. <laughs> Am I right? All right, let's see what we have. Oh my goodness, this is so cute. Let's go here. So in less than, I did a whole hour live show 
and embroidered. And this took about, what, 20 minutes, including the full tutorial? Look at how cute this is. So see how the elastic stays at the top? It gives it like just a nice, cute, scrunchy look. And then this part is the same width as the bottom. So it's kind of a, a, a light gather. I love this. So here's one that's finished. You can see the hem looks beautiful. And then here's one that we added, the poodle, which was an applique. And I did have someone ask me, um, can you send this to your Scan and Cut? You can. I had a little issue yesterday sending it because this was an Art Spira embroidery design. But every other design I have in my Stellaire or my Luminaire that I sent, if you have my connection, you turn it into an applique and send it to your Scan and Cut and it cuts this out for you. But you know, I love this, how it's a little bit rough around the edges. And I think the next one that I do over here, I'm going to cut a little bit further away because it just looks rough. It kind of looks like dog hair. <laughs> so what do you think? Are you going to try this? So you have this as your tutorial and then refer back to Brother's show yesterday for the information. And then you have the pattern hack for the Linda. So a top for you and a skirt for your little ones. How's that? I know it's so much fun. So <laughs> while I was playing in the sewing studio uh, this week and last week, I've been playing with PE Design, designing my own pockets, which I will share with you next week. I can give you a little preview here, just so you know what's coming. Yeah. If I, I absolutely love embroidering, and the more I play with the digitizing side, oh my gosh, the possibilities are absolutely endless. So here's just a little quick preview of what you're going to see next week. If I can find it, here it is. You see what's happening there. So we played with this last week and I wanted to play it a little bit more. So I made these really wide stitches. I made triple stitches, all these fun things, translated them into embroidery, sent them to the machine. And I have two pockets. I have, I'll give you a quick look to show you what's coming next week. Next week, I'll show you exactly how I did this and give you a little preview here. So you can see I embroidered my pockets. I embroidered other parts of my pattern and then how to cut these out and relate them, especially if you do have a brother machine, you want to catch that show because I give some tips for placement and things like that. But how do you think, does they turn out cute? Yeah. Very fun. So that's what's happening in the studio. News for the week. Well, I think I kind of shared it with you. <laughs> Fashion Sewing Club, we did Welt Pockets this uh, yesterday. The replay is up in the club. If you're not a Fashion Sewing Club member, join. You can go back and watch that episode. We made a beautiful Welt Pocket. And in our next Fashion Sewing Club, we're working on fringe. How to make your own fringe that looks good. Out of tweet, of course. <laughs> All right, everyone. If you need to find me, info at AngelaWolf.com. Or join our Facebook group, Angela Wolf Patterns Facebook group. I love seeing what you're working on, and I would love to see if you make this skirt. So I'm just going to check here, make sure that um, I have. Let me make just bring this up in case you're looking for me. Here you go. And someone said, how do I find the calendar to know what's going on? If you go to AngelaWolf.com and click on the top right, and I think I can bring this up for you. Maybe. Here you go. It's really easy. And I usually keep it at least one week in advance. There's a lot on the calendar, so it takes a lot. But here you go. Um, go to AngelaWolf.com. And on the top here, click on Classes and Events. And you'll see this little box appear. Click there. And here are all the live shows, uh, Fashion Sewing Club things coming up. And the best part is if you go by the month, you can go back and watch. Now, these things were events that are expired now, so you can't get in those. But you could go back uh, even to last month and see what was going on. 
click on any of those and you can go back and watch the replays. And if you're searching for someone, let's just say you're looking for Kim Montanese because she had some great shows. Look up Kim and it'll bring up any shows if she's been on any of these. I think she was on, is she on in April? Oh, there's Kim. So you, I have it where you can search by uh, instructor or educator if I'm doing a brother live show. And uh, also you can search by topic. This only started in January though. So I'm so <laughs> sorry to say we're on well over 300 episodes on behind the scene and we're on over 400 for brother. And we never even started counting for the first hundred. So just started in January. The other ones you got to search for. So, all right, everyone. It was so great to see you. Thank you for joining me. I'm live in the chat. So be sure to leave me a message. I always love to hear and see each one of your beautiful voices on there. And until next time, Happy sewing. Bye.